long time ago, in Kyrgyzstan, there was a Khanate that was ruled by a na man named Saribay. He was the Khan, the ruler of the Khanate. And he was a very, very good man, a very good ruler. But as he grew old, he realized that his time was coming to an end. He gathered all the people in the Khanate together, and he said to them, he said, bear witness, have I been a good ruler for you? Have I been a good Khan? And the people said, oh yes, Saribay, you have been a very good Khan, a very good ruler for us. And Saribe said, you know, I know that my time is coming to an end. My allotment for food and drink is coming to an end. Very soon I will pass away. You need to choose your next Khan, your next ruler. And the people said, no, Saribe, choose for us. You know, we trust your judgment. And Saribe said to the people, he said, no, you know, the words of the dead are, are soon forgotten by the living. You need to choose your own Khan. But the people said, no, we will abide by your wishes. Just tell us how you want us to choose the next ruler. And Saribe said, fine. You see here, I have this white falcon. He's my companion. After I pass away, this falcon will not eat or drink for three days and three nights. Approach him again on the fourth day with food and water. Give him food and water. He will eat and he will drink and then let him go. He will fly up into the air and he will land on the shoulder of your next Khan. Within one week, Saribe was dead. The people gathered together and they watched the white falcon. Sure enough, for three days and three nights, the falcon neither ate nor drank anything. And on the fourth day, when they approached it again with food and water, it ate, it drank, they let it go, and it flew up into the air uh, over the crowd that had gathered there, each one wanting to be chosen by the falcon as the next Khan. Finally, the falcon landed on the shoulder of a young shepherd boy named Balotbek. And the elders in the Khanate, they said, oh, we can't choose this young Balotbek as our next Khan. He is poor. He's just a shepherd boy. He is young. But some of the others, they reminded them. They said, don't you remember what Saribe said? That the words of the dead are too soon forgotten by the living. We must not make that come true. Let's give him a chance. So they gave Balotbek a chance to be the next ruler, the next Khan. And he turned out to be a very good choice. He was young, he was wise, and he always remembered to feed the poor out of the Khan's own stores because he remembered what it was like to be poor. But as time passed, the people grew worried because Balotbek did not take a wife. And they thought one day they would be in the same position where Balatbek dies and they'll have to choose another Khan. So they came together and they said to Balatbek, Balatbek, please take a wife so you can have an heir, so that we can have stability and the next Khan will come from you. And Balatbek said, okay, fine. Gather all the fine maidens of the Khanat. I will ask them three questions and whoever can answer my questions, I will marry her. Now all the maidens of the Khanate, they gathered together, each one want to, wanting to be the Khan's wife. And they gathered and they stayed at an inn near the Khan's palace. Every day they came to the Khan's palace and Balatbek asked them three questions. The first question he asked them is, what is the distance between the east and the west? The second question he asked them is what is the distance between the earth and the sky? And the third question he asked them is what is the distance between truth and falsehood? Well, the maidens, they could not answer. For three days, they went back and forth to the inn where they were staying and back to the palace where Balatbek was asking them these three questions. And in the village, in the fields, there was a young girl, a young maiden, her name was Donishman. She was very poor. She was a farm worker and she was working in the fields. And she saw these high-born maidens going back and forth from the inn to, the Bal to Balatbek's palace. And on the third day, she had the courage and she asked them, why are you going back and forth from the inn to the, the Khan's palace? And some of them were very mean and they said, what's it to you? You're just a dirty farm girl. 
But one of them was nicer. And she told the Donishman, the girl Donishman, she said, she said, well, the Balatbek has vowed that he will marry whoever can answer these three questions. And then she told her the three questions. And Donishman said, could I come with you? Can I try? And most of them laughed, but the kinder one said, yes, you can come with us. So Donishman went with those fine born maidens back to the Khan's palace. And Balatbek again asked them the three questions. What is the distance between the east and the west? What is the distance between the earth and the sky? And what is the distance between truth and falsehood? None of the maidens had found an answer. And finally, Donishman, the wise one, she stepped forward and she said, may I answer this, these questions? And Balatbek looked at her and she was dressed in not very nice clothes, but he said, yes, you may answer. And Donishman said, that the distance between the east and the west is one day's journey. For the sun rises in the east, it travels across the sky, and it sets in the west in one day's time. And Balatbek said, good answer. And Donishman said that the distance between the earth and the sky is easily encompassed by the eye. For the eye looks down and it sees the earth, and then it looks up and it sees the sky. And Balatbek said, good answer. And Donishman said that the distance between truth and falsehood is the width of four fingers. It's the distance between the ear and the eye. For the ear hears the falsehood, but the eye sees the truth. And Balatbek said, good answer, I will marry you. Now the two of them got married. And on, their night, on the, the night of their honeymoon, Balatbek, he said to Donishman, he said, you know, I think we're going to be very happy together. But I just want you to promise me one thing. And Donishman said, what's that? And Balatbek said, I want you to only share your wisdom with me, not with any other man not with any other person, only with me. And Donishman agreed. She said, okay, I will only share my wisdom with you. For many years, Balatbek and Donishman, they ruled with kindness and justice. And whenever Balatbek came upon a problem that he could not solve, he consulted Donishman, and in her wisdom, she always gave him the best answer. And always, always, they remembered the poor. They fed the poor. They took care of the poor out of their own stores. Everything was peaceful. Everything was happy until one day a man <coughs> committed a crime for which the punishment was death. The next day he was going to go before Balatbek to be judged and he was desperate. So he went to Donishman. He said, Queen Donishman, Please tell me what I should say to avert the punishment so Balatbek cannot assign me to, be, to die. And Donishman said, I cannot. I promised Balatbek that I would not share my wisdom with any other person. And the man said, but I'm going to die. And Donishman said, okay, fine. I will tell you what words to say, but do not tell anybody that I told you what to say, because if you do, I will be in very, very bad trouble. And the man promised. The next day, he went before Balatbek to be judged. And when Balatbek gave him the charge, the man gave such an answer. It was so clever that all of a sudden, Balatbek could not apply the punishment of death. But the man looked like a very simple person. And Balatbek grew suspicious. He said, who told you to say that? And the man said, I cannot tell you. And Balatbek said, you tell me who told you to give that clever answer, or else I will carry out the punishment of death anyways. And the man said, it was your wife, Donishman. And Balatbek was furious. He stormed into the chambers and he confronted Donishman. He said, you have betrayed me. You promised me you were not going to share your wisdom with any other person, and you have betrayed me. And Donishman said, yes, I have. 
And Balak Bek said, you take whatever is most valuable and you leave my khanat tomorrow morning. And Danishman said, yes, I will do that. But before I do that, can you just give me one favor? And she sounded kind of reasonable. So Balat Bek said, OK, fine. I'll give you one last favor. And Danishman said, would you please dine with me one last time? And Balat Bek said, OK, fine. So Donishman went and prepared all of Balat Bek's favorite foods, all their favorite meals. And she set them out on a long table in the garden. And at the end of the day, they got together and they ate very, very slowly. Balatbek did not want to be rude, so he did not hurry the meal. Donishman, she nibbled this, and she nibbled that, and then she spoke about all the good times that they had together. And when she grew a little bit tired, she got up, and Balatbek joined her, and they walked around the garden, talking about all the things that they had done, all the judgments they had made, all the good times that they had had. And when they came back at, to the table, Donishman sat down and she nibbled on this and she nibbled on that. And pretty soon, Balatbek grew very, very tired. It had been a long day. And as he sat there trying not to fall asleep, he couldn't help it. His eyes grew heavier and heavier. And pretty soon, he fell asleep. As soon as he was sleeping, Donishman called the servants. She said, prepare a cart and a horse. And she wrapped up a Balatbek into a carpet and she got the servants to help her carry the carpet with Balatbek in it and put it in the cart. Then she got into the cart and she whipped the horses and all night she drove until she got to the border of the next Khanat and there she waited. She pastured the horse, she sat down in the cart and she waited. And when the sun rose, it shone on Balatbek's face and he woke up. He sat up. And he looked around at the strange surroundings. And he looked at Donishman and he said, what have you done? Where am I? And Donishman said, I have only done what you told me to do. You told me to take whatever was most valuable to me and leave your khanat. I have taken you. And Balatbek, he felt really silly. He said, oh, okay, fine, let's go home. And the two of them, they went home and they lived happily ever after.